when your team scores that goal er, early on, you, you've had so much trouble putting the ball in the net. Does that? Do you sense that opens things up a little bit as far as uh, maybe not relaxing during the game, but just freeing them of having to worry about that and just letting them go out and play? Yeah. Say? I think pressure was mounting a little bit, and especially, well, I'll, I'll speak personally first. So after the first 15 minutes, we were on top of them, right? We could all clearly see that we were on top of them and we didn't score. So there's those little subtle moments of deja vu about the Vancouver game. And then does LA go down and score on that set piece? You know, something like that. So, yeah, there was a little bit of relief from my perspective. I think the team yesterday was determined. So I'm not so sure they felt the same way I did, or maybe as the fans did, because I think they were very singular in purpose. They were going to go out and win that game. So I'm not so sure they felt those things, but I certainly did. Brian, this is proverbial, which is your favorite kid, but which which were you most proud of yesterday, the shutout or the three goals? Well, we had set a goal. You know, different coaches do different things, setting goals, and is it a you know, an overall league, you know, season goal and then mini goal, you know. We went out yesterday to keep a clean sheet. And so I was proud that we were able to accomplish that as a team. Then the quality of the goals you know, just added to that, you know. It was that, sorry, were you done? Uh, I was just gonna, was that, it didn't matter who you were gonna put in the back line. So the goal was, we the sound is gonna get a shutout, and then you have to do the shifting, it didn't change. We knew, based on our recent form, that we are too good of a team not to start scoring goals. So if we played a zero, we knew that the attackers were gonna do their thing, and they did the second time that it's like a kind of a backup defense has got that clean sheet and the same guys there what what is it about when that happens that is there just pushes the guys ahead of them yeah I mean look Tony came on and did a really nice job Jordy DeLem did a really nice job uh, Gustav was solid again and Joven was Joe I mean he locked Alessandrini down I mean took him out of the game there was that one moment where he's on the ground banging his fist on the ground in frustration. That was partly due to Joven. So I think the back four, and then you, always, you can't forget about Steph. He did a great job again and you know had to make that save late in the game, the double save. I mean, they were very good. Did any of that change anything on your, you know, in your mind, the, the depth chart of the team, or does everything kind of still stay the same? Well, look, it's a little too early to go to that extreme, but they're certainly making my job more difficult. And we as coach and Jimmy Triori, coaching the defenders, it makes his job a little more difficult, and that's great. Speaking, oh, sorry. Speaking of that defense, what makes Tony so, so special? It seems like every time he comes in, he always puts in a good performance. Well, he's ambitious because he's young, and he wants to prove that he can you know, play and belong at this level and stuff like that, so he's got that going for him. But then you know, he did a really good job defensively, which is what we're trying to work with him on. Because you always see, you know, his left foot. His left foot is really smooth. I mean, his long ball, his range of passing, I mean, all that stuff is really good. But it was always the defending part of it that we were concerned about. And he, he made a pretty big statement, shut down Zardes. You know, Gio was over on that side. Alessandrini was on that side. So it was good performance. What about the attack um, changed by bringing Will Bruin in? What did you specifically instruct him to do? Just stay as high and occupy Stairs and Van Damme. Leave a little more space in there for Deuce and Nico and, you know, that little inside left channel for Jordy. So he did his job. Are you pleased with how Morris, I mean, obviously he got to go. Were you pleased with how he played that position? Yeah, there's a few tweaks. I, I, I will watch some film with him on an individual basis just to tweak where we want him to be in certain moments. But, yeah, overall I was pleased. You talked about self-expression being important. Is that what happened with the three that you just named? Was that part of it in terms of creativity, self-expression in the front? You, you, you're talking about Dempsey, yeah, you... Morris, and Nico? Nico, yeah. Yeah, but again, it's a team game. I mean, Joven helps down that left-hand side. I mean, he was murdering people down the left. You know, Nico came over and we overloaded that area of the field and they didn't have enough guys to cover. Then centrally, Ozzy and Christian did a really good job of matching up and, you know, overtaking their two central midfielders. That's why their coach had to make the change. So, 
I think there was a lot of factors that that led to the big three, you know, doing their job. And again, it's just it's a team game, so they need help just as much as you know they help us. It, it seemed at the start of the season that, looking back at last year, Jordan was more comfortable on the outside, and you had Will Bruin in the bench that was a veteran that could play that top position. What what was the thinking of starting with Jordan up top instead of Bruin at the beginning of the season? Well, my philosophy is you give the veteran guys, the senior guys, the first shot. So, you know, Jordy's fully capable of being up there on his own. And, you know, the group that won a championship was going to get first crack at it. And, you know, that's what we did. Fantastic. Uh, how is Jordan doing? So I had to come off early, had some ice. The only reason why I took him off, because he was pissed at me a little bit, he didn't want to come off, okay. was because I needed him to rest his ankle. Because, look, I take 30 minutes off him there, make sure nothing happens, because we're still on a gradual process to get him 100. He's not 100% yet. It didn't, he, he didn't you know, take any steps back or anything? No, no, no. No, no that was precautionary. You had S2 out here today practicing with the, the first team, um, getting a little bit more integration. Uh, what's that do for those guys to be able to see the first team coaches evaluating them? Well, I hope it makes – there's some inspiration there. I mean, I hope they, they understand what's going on. It's you know, It was a great day to make that happen, and you know, it's something that we're going to continue to do. Azrael Gonzalez was out here. I mean – He's out there working with Pineda. He's out there watching Ozzy and Christian play. I mean, all that stuff is great. We love that. Uh, Kovar, Evans, and Torres are out here. As of now, are they available for selection this weekend? Uh, ask me that later in the week. I will let you know for 100% certain. But yes, they're all getting closer. And Chad Marshall, the same already? Swore back, didn't come out today. That's, that's, like, that's a lingering thing. We're trying to work on it. You said LeRon Torres pretty full fitness what was the reason he didn't travel to LA he seemed like he was okay I don't know I'm just wondering why he didn't make it just with hamstrings you want to be ultra careful this early in the season if he would have gone down and played and he really tore it it would have set us back you know two three months how did Chad hurt his back did did he get a knee in it or Uh, it's it's just stiffness it comes on he's he's uh, I shouldn't do this, but there was something with his ligaments that, that, that keep the discs in line and, you know, just sore back. Yeah.